Hello everybody, I am uh, Kalev Lemper. I work at the uh, desktop team at uh, Red Hat. So nice to see you, see all your smiling faces. Thank you for coming to my talk. So uh, my talk is a quick uh, overview of what, what's going on in GNOME software, what we have been up to uh, last year. Uh, so in, in, in case someone doesn't know what GNOME software is, GNOME software is the software center for GNOME. It does uh, handles application installing, removal, updates, it can uh, it supports uh, various different backends. It supports uh, installing uh, RPMs, uh, flatbacks, RPM OST updates. Uh, yeah, I, I assume most of you know what GNOME software is since, since you've uh, come to this talk. And here's a quick screenshot for this. So, uh, 2018. Um, uh, GNOME software uh, saw quite a lot of changes there, uh, and uh, I, I was uh, I was also actually surprised by some of the changes since I was gone uh, half of the summer, or actually most of the summer, uh, and uh, then I came back, and uh, then a lot of changes had landed, and uh, and then I had a mountain of bug fixes waiting for me to fix so that Fedora 29 could release and. Uh, so it was, uh, it's been a, a busy year. So there's a bunch of things we've, 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 uh, we've done. Uh, and we'll go through all of them one by one. So uh, Richard Hughes uh, wrote a new library called libxmlb. It's a new uh, parser for uh, upstream. Upstream is the, is the format that that describes all uh, the desktop applications, the description and, and uh, so on. And uh, the way uh, libxmlb works is that it writes, uh, writes a, it uh, reads in all the, there's a build step involved there. So, so it, uh, it reads in all the files and creates a binary cache. And then the client application, which is GNOME software, then M maps the, the binary cache uh, and uh, and uh, reach it uh, from there. This this uh, <coughs> this makes things faster because we are reading it from a binary cache, which is optimized for fast uh, lookups. And uh, it also reduces uh, GNOME software memory use by uh, I believe 100 megabytes, which is quite a lot because we no longer need to keep all the data in memory for quick lookups. So. Uh, that's a new thing, and uh, uh, that is landing in Fedora 20, uh, Fedora 30 cycle. And uh, it's sorry, it's uh, the library is there, but uh, GNOME software is not using using it. Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Um, and uh, so in Fedora 30, uh, we are. Um, we are switching to it, and uh, and uh, there's quite a lot of regressions there. So if you could try uh, uh, try out Rawhide and report those, uh, we'll try to get all of those fixed. So uh, the next item also starts with lib, and this one is is in Fedora 29 already. Uh, this is uh, lib flatback. Flatback now has a has a library that supports uh, uh, client side operations. And uh, we are now doing, uh, doing uh, the flagback CLI and GNOME software uh, uh, transactions uh, through the same library, which, which uh, makes it so that we share bugs and features with the CLI. Uh, we've had some long-standing bugs where, where um, runtime extensions and uh, application extensions were depth solved in a different way in GNOME software and, uh, and fl flatback command line, and uh, this should fix most of them. Uh, this was one of the things that landed during the summer when I was gone, and, uh, and, uh, but, uh, and I I've spent quite a lot of time bug fixing this. So uh, hopefully it should be in a good shape now. But uh, as always, report bugs if you see any. Uh, New thing that landed just uh, two weeks ago. Uh, 
this is work by Matthias Klassen, is to, uh, is to show permissions for uh, flatback, uh, flatbacks. So uh, uh, flatbacks, uh, flat, flatback command line has showed them for a long time, but now we are trying to catch up with that. So uh, flatback permissions are like what kind of file system access it, it has, does it access dbus, does it access some other service, uh, and uh, so, so we, we have a way to show permissions for already installed apps, and then uh, when, when, an update get, when an app gets an update and new permissions appear, then we, uh, then we hold back the update and ask the user, user if they want to update uh, and show the list of permissions and uh, so on. So um, that's the same kind of um, concept as Google Play Store has. It shows new permissions. Here's a screenshot. This, uh, this app is, uh, is, uh, is a cooking app and it shows what permissions it has. Not many. And uh, yes, yes, when it gets an update, it shows new permissions. Uh, there's some UI fixes that need to be done here, so it uh, looks a bit prettier, but the groundwork is all there. And this is also landing in Fedora 30. And it's already in draw ahead. Uh, then we have automatic updates. In Fedora 29, uh, we, uh, GNOME software updates uh, flatbacks in the background by default. There's, an, uh, there's a new settings dialog where, where you can uh, control that. You can turn this off. And uh, uh, offline di uh, distro updates were, were prepared uh, were prepared uh, automatically before as well, but uh, now it looks a bit different in the UI. We have a, when you are not using automatic updates, when you go through GNOME software manually, uh, before it was, there was a refresh button and then you clicked on it, and then it took like two hours and because it downloaded all the updates, which was not good user experience at all. So what we have now is that the refresh button only refreshes the metadata and then we have a down, then it shows a list of things to download, then we have a download button and after that comes a progress bar when things are downloaded and finally there's a restart and update button. Yeah, I, yeah. and uh, here's a screenshot. We have a, a preferences dialog and, uh, and behind there there's the new download step that's split out. Um, then we have a new thing that uh, Owen was just talking about. Um, since, we are, since we are getting um, flatbacks built in uh, Fedora, and we also have the same uh, things available as RPMs, we need a way to choose between those. So we have a source selection dropdown, uh, which allows selecting between a flatback and RPM packages. And uh, here's a screenshot of that. This is Inkscape, and in the upper right corner, there's, there's a drop down where you can select between the Flat Hub version and the Fedora version. Um, I think it needs uh, one more thing. We need, to do, uh, we need to have a way to select between different, different Flatback versions, because uh, right now, so up, up until now, we've only had Flatbacks from one source, but, uh, uh, which is Flatback pretty much. But uh, I think we need to, uh, we probably need to show multiple flatbacks there in the future. Anyway, uh, that was my quick talk. Uh, thank you for coming here and, uh, and uh, I'm here for questions. Who goes first? You. Uh, how often is uh, the norms of projecting for those updates? Um, so the question was how often is GNOME software checking for updates? Uh, GNOME software um, uh, tries to refresh the metadata every uh, met metadata daily, and uh, and also does the automatic updates daily. And uh, but uh, but for the steps that require a user uh, uh, that require the user to do something, for example to restart, uh, then we only only offer them to the user uh, once a week. So we we. Uh, Queue, queue up the, uh, we, we, uh, we just uh, 
Yeah, we, we just uh, prepared updates, but we don't, don't actually ask the user to restart. We don't want to get them to restart every day. Yo? So the question was uh, uh, that uh, so far, uh, GNOME, when GNOME software has been updating flatpacks, it, it has not correctly updated uh, extensions. And the question was, uh, is the new flatpack uh, backend going to do that? So yes, that was the ma that was major motivation why we did that, so that we could get uh, uh, both app extensions and uh, SDK extensions and runtime extensions uh, correctly updated. Do you plan to have any user feedback because I am most of the time ending with the uh, rotating circle and uh, don't know if anything is happening? Uh, so the question was, uh, do we plan to add more user feedback? Uh, uh, because often GNOME software only shows a, a circle, a, a spinning circle, and uh, it's hard to know if it's doing anything. Uh, the answer is yes. We've, uh, we've already started doing that. We've uh, the splitting up the, the updates into two t separate steps was, uh, was the first step in that direction. Because we, 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 are, we also feel that there's very little user feedback right now. So we split up updates so that uh, the download step is completely separate with the progress bar. And uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll try to do the same pattern in other places as well to show a progress bar and, uh, and, and some useful, uh, uh, useful messages. One thing that we didn't manage to do in time for Fedora 29 was to show textual progress for updates. Uh, what we want to do is, is to show like downloading one megabyte out of 10 gigabytes and then and, and, and. So, so it's actually so, so it's not just a short progress part but actually actually useful information yeah we uh, the comment was that the flatback CLI shows how much data is being downloaded, uh, and we and uh, and my comment is that yes, we are going to show that in uh, GNOME software as well. Yeah, that's the plan. Maybe just add that you can run uh, GNOME Any more questions? Do you know why this sometimes happens? When OpenQA tries to refresh the available system updates? I don't know. Only sometimes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I think we, we talked about this on IRC yeah. too. And uh, I don't know. Uh, so, um, so Adam showed a, showed a policy kit dialog that, uh, that sometimes shows up in GNOME software. And uh, we don't know why it's showing up. It needs investigation. Uh, yeah, I'll find a bug, exactly. I don't know. This, uh, I've, I've been buried under a mountain of bugs. Uh, and uh, lately, it's been just me fixing bugs. So, uh, one person against uh, bugs. <laughs> Anyone else have a bug to report? Oh. The question was, what's the current state of GNOME software and TNF? Uh, do they collaborate? Uh, uh, so so, so um, there's a library called libdnf, which is a bit, uh, which has a, and the, the, the name there uh, kind of implies that it's, uh, it's a library that TNF uses, but uh, up until very recently it was actually GNOME software using it, but not TNF itself. And uh, DNF is, uh, is getting rewritten to use the library. And uh, so my, my hope was that in a good future, GNOME software and, and DNF both use libdnf and then... Hey, there 
was a DNF talk just earlier which said that that's what they're planning to do. Mm -hmm. ah. Or rather, they're going to have a C API in the DNF, which auto generates from Python bindings, mm -hmm. and DNF will use those Python bindings, so it can't be done using the same thing because mm -hmm. the bindings. So th there was a comment that uh, there was a talk er earlier that said that <coughs> TNF is getting uh, rewritten, rewritten in C++ and, um, and th that's true. But the problem is that TNF is not starting to use the same API that Chrome software uses, but the uh, TNF uh, is getting rewritten into C++ and uh, the C++ is getting added to libDNF, but added so that Chrome software still doesn't go through the same code Good path. Yeah, so, uh, so. Also said that the API in the software I use will be generated by a script too. So mm -hmm. It will still basically be the same thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of. There's a, there was a picture in the slides that sort of wraps it all up. Mm -hmm. Yep, interesting. So yeah, uh, it's not really uh, sharing a lot of code with the uh, Yeah. So related to this, what's the future for package kit? Are there any changes ahead? The question was, what's the future for package kit? Do we have any bigger changes coming? So, uh, <coughs> package kit uses libdnf, and uh, like an earlier comment said that uh, that um, libdnf is getting rewritten into C++. Uh, I guess we we will have to uh, maybe uh, port package kit to the new C++ uh, classes at some point. But that's uh, pretty much rewriting all of the package kits backend. Uh, and uh, right now, my manager is saying to not spend uh, time on uh, on package kit. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. So does Chrome Software use package kit or directly? Uh, the question was: Does Chrome Software use package kit or libdnf directly? Uh, Gnome software uses package kit, yes, and uh, package kit uses libdnf. Yeah. Uh, it's like, that, that, it's like it, you're saying there's a, there's a project that's about rewriting or consolidating all the package stuff into one library, it's called Musk or libdnf, and eventually you know, all those software, you know, front end, like you know, Chrome software, as well as dnf, micro dnf, package, with all those should eventually use or fall into libdnf. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically the future. Quite far from now, probably, but <laughs> yeah, so, so it should be much, much simpler in the future. Like the whole layout should be much simpler than right now. Yeah, but that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yiri. Question about the download sizes for flatbag applications. Because when you go through uh, user commands, you often see like there is, for example, a simple application like calculator. And it shows easily like the amount size 1.2 gigabytes, and then you see the user comments like yeah, this is just very to authenticate without any context. Because first, it doesn't say that it also downloads the runtime, the application requires. And even with this included, usually, uh, at least uh, from my experience, it's a uh, huge overestimation. Like, for example, download uh, the, the runtime of the application. I mean, totally it was like 200 megabytes instead of 1.2 because there was like the application in play, etc. So I wonder if there is any plan to give those numbers like more to the underlying context or maybe I don't know, remove them completely because it does more harm than good in my opinion. So the question was that uh, flatback uh, download sizes are wildly overestimated. And is there a plan to uh, to solve that? So I know Alex has been thinking about that, uh, how to get uh, get the size reporting from Flatback uh, more accurate. And uh, one thing we can uh, can do in GNOME software side, I guess, is to show two separate lines so that there's the runtime size and the app size, and maybe users can make a better guess based on that. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not working on that problem. If if uh, if uh, flatback uh, command line, if if, leap, leap flat, if it gets solved in leap flatback, then then we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll get the same thing in Chrome software as well. But. Uh, <coughs>
Any more questions? Maybe one that is similar to any project that is, for example, previously the Delta RPMs, who may be in Java smaller. I, I currently live in my home at 6 megabits per second. So I, I started feeling the pain when I start a computer on Monday morning and it starts normally go the updates for the last week. And with that connection, I am. I've got like full bandwidth uh, occupied by you know, software downloading the packages or something like that. Really, I, I imagine in the world there are many users even with shittier connections than I have. So the question was, uh, is, are there any plans to use Delta RPMs? Because uh, on low bandwidth connections, uh, it can take uh, quite a lot of time right now to download all updates. So, <coughs> maybe, maybe five or six years ago, I once upon a time did a patch to LeapSif. If uh, anyone knows what that is, LeapSif was, uh, was, uh, was a library uh, that Richard Hughes wrote to, uh, to do step solving better than Yum did, and then LeapSif grew into LeapHif. And then LeapHIF grew into LeapDNF, which is what is now. So uh, there is actually a really old patch to do Delta RPMs. And um, I remember finding it last year, and, and I was like, whoa, this is so old. So maybe we should try to uh, make that happen. Uh, I, I have no recollection why we didn't merge it back then. Uh, but uh, there's a new project instead of uh, Delta RPMs. There's, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, that thing. So uh, maybe that's a. It's mostly meant for for metadata right now. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, you also extend it to packages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the so the comment was that the the plan with the Z chunk is to uh, is right now for metadata and and uh, maybe in the future for packages. So yeah. So I I guess we need to support both then. Uh, but the ones what is uh, the software is using. So all those package get questions. If anyone wants to help uh, help improve the package the package get uh, DNF backend, that would be uh, awesome because I'm, get, I'm I have a lot of pressure to work on other things, not package kit, because that's the old technology. So things aren't progressing super fast there, but uh, but uh, I hope they'll get better there too. We have one more question. Last Ah, we can go home and uh, or go to pop. So thank you everybody for coming and uh